Oi, para si. I think it's really difficult to tell when it started my passion for cooking, but actually I think it started my passion for food, to eat. I remember when I was like four, five, six years old, I arrived home and the first thing that I do was going to the kitchen and starting to taste everything that was happening. So almost 35 years ago. I was born in Cascais, near the sea, but at the same time in the countryside because I had a vegetable garden and had chickens, I had chickens, rabbits, and uh, so felt like being on the countryside, but near the sea, I was friends with the fishermen. So since I'm, I'm a child that I get to know a lot of uh, ingredients. Um, in my grandmother's house, we used to, to eat very well. Laura, that was this lady that worked in my house for um, I don't know, 60 years, started with my grand grandfather, then my father, my mother and me. I learned a lot with her. I think those were my big reference at that time. Uh, and then when I fell in love with the kitchen, when I thought that I could be a, a chef one day, uh, I started to, to search, uh, to read, and then you have, uh, I have a few chefs all around the world that are my references. I studied arts, I wanted to be an architect, but studied only till the 12th grade. Uh, I, I did a, a degree in business and communication and marketing. Um, so when I was 20, uh, 21, I decided that I wanted to be a chef, or I wanted to try to be a chef. So I started to make an internship. I was still finishing the last year. I, I had to prepare a thesis, uh, like a final work for the, for the fourth uh, year degree. And I, I did already a, a study uh, of marketing image and identity about the Portuguese astronomy. So at that time, Maria Durge Modesto was uh, one of the responsibles for that work. Uh, she was my patrona. And I had to interview 100 people in the area, in Portugal, 50 Portuguese, 50 foreign, uh, to make a study uh, and to understand the perception of the foreign people and not the Portuguese about Portuguese astronomy. And that opened a lot of doors to me. I remember to 19 years ago, more or less, almost 20, I entered for the first time to work in a professional kitchen. It was Fortaleza do Guincho in Cascais. Uh, and my heart started to beat very fast. So, uh, and I thought at that moment that it was uh, what I really wanted to do for the rest of my life. It's very difficult for you when you are 17, 18 years old to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. Not only for me, but for everybody in general. So I made an agreement with my mother at that time when I decided I, still, uh, I was still studying. When I decided to try to become a cook, but I made an agreement of finishing the, uh, the degree because I think that it's very important to, to complete cycles. Because if you leave many things uh, on half, uh, you don't feel like you achieve anything. So uh, I decided to have that uh, degree. Actually, only on the third uh, year that I thought about being a cook and trying to be a cook. It was a little bit crazy. My, uh, my sister had finished also the um, law university and she wanted to do something else. So my mother was a little bit crazy about that too. So uh, I, I decided to uh, to finish the, the degree and then see. Because uh, I was studying at night during the, the last years. I started my internship for six months during the day. And I dis really discovered that I, I could pursue that dream and try to be a, a cook. My professional first steps as a cook was they were making internships in several restaurants in Portugal and abroad. Have some experience in Brazil, in Italy, in Spain, uh, in France, to try to learn more and more and more. Uh, I had um, an amazing opportunity. I've worked one year with uh, um, Engineer José Bento Santos. He's a gourmet, he's more than everything. He's a wine producer, of course. He's, he's a gastronomer, he's someone that um, maybe in Portugal, one of the persons who knows more about gastronomy. I've worked with him. He had at that time more than 5,000 books, cooking books. Uh, I remember to, to be in this office full of books and reading like for months 
and cooking at night, uh, cooking to journalists, to tasting wines. So it was for me that year was really, really important for my career. And then I tried to start like alone uh, to have my first restaurant and then went to, to El Bull in 2007, where I stayed uh, for one season making an internship too. And I really can't remember the rest because so many things. I regret many times this choice because it's really hard. Uh, it's really hard profession, it's really hard uh, to start, it's really hard every year. I think when you think that, okay, the first two, three years are harder, but this is really hard. Uh, it's 15, 16 hours a day, seven days a week sometimes. I think uh, to have someone sit at our table and they are very happy about what we're doing, that those are the decisive moments for me. Like when I'm very tired uh, waking up in the morning and I have to decide if I stay in bed or if I have to, I can't decide actually, I have, my decision is taken, I have to get up. But if I get up with a smile or if I'm crying, uh, it's because of those people that sit at our tables. But opening a restaurant is very hard to uh, read or hear the first critics. Uh, to, to be able to teach while you need to learn to, uh, to be able to talk with your guests. To, so it's a, a profession that you really need to have a big passion about because when you're working, your family and friends normally are having fun because you are working for them. My kids now are nine and eight and I stayed only like one year New Year's Eve with them. Uh, Christmas were like half, half. My younger, when he was three, he used to call me my uh, father's brother because he didn't understand I was his father too. Uh, so it's like, it's hard. It's like a memory. It's like a face memory, a music memory, uh, when you remember something. But for a chef, you really need to have memories of the tastes or else to create one dish, you had to try to taste everything from the beginning, it, it would be impossible to create something in a time that it would be for you to be able to, to, to create new menus, to, to do new things. First time that I traveled uh, to Brazil when I was like 13, 14 years old, and the first thing I, I, I noticed was the, the smell of the alcohol in the cars. Uh, the fuel in the cars was alcohol. And it's a smell that I remember, t remember till now. Because the flavor and the smell, of course, are very connected. Because without smell, we only feel a few flavors, uh, the basic ones. Uh, so for me, uh, to understand and to remember smells and flavors are really important to, to my profession and to whatever. It's what I'm doing. We are always trying to taste new things. We are. Uh, always trying to understand more and more about uh, different cultures, uh, uh, understand different culinary scenes, uh, um, to be able to taste the typical traditional, but also uh, the new trends. But sometimes only to have a great soup, or to have a great tomato in the summer with some salt, to have a, a great piece of bread with butter. Food is something that it's uh, more than a technique, it's more than a couple of ingredients together. Uh, so it's culture, it's identity, it's soul, uh, and it feeds you. So you need food to, to maintain your life. You can also do other things with it. I don't think that people normally come to my restaurants only because they're hungry. Uh, it's because they're hungry, but it's because uh, they want to have an experience. So. We work on that uh, to, to try to promote that in our restaurants. So many people ask me where I get my inspiration. Sometimes I say everywhere and sometimes I say nowhere because you need to be open for the inspiration. You need to work, 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 taste, 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 to try new things. Uh, and then you rest a little bit and you have an idea. Um, sometimes I look at a plate, empty plate, and I think about something to serve. 
um, in that play to become a dish. Sometimes I look into an apple and I think I'm going to do something with this apple. Uh, sometimes I taste a beautiful typical dish and I think I'm going to reproduce this but it might take on it. Sometimes I look at the landscape, sometimes I read a poem, sometimes I listen to music, sometimes uh, the autumn arrives and uh, I see uh, the leaves falling and I hear the first shots and the game is here and I... So many places uh, or um, anywhere. It's very difficult to choose only one to be my favorite, but the thing that I miss most when I'm traveling is a good soup, like a good vegetable soup. And I sometimes ask in the hotel that I'm staying or something to go to the kitchen and to cook a soup. Uh, sometimes they let me, sometimes they don't. The Portuguese food and to have something very simple, something that I really recognize, that, it's, that makes me comfortable. So to have like a bean soup with cabbage and uh, turnip and carrots and a little bit of chorizo, uh, I could have it like three, four times a week, for sure. I think I was always an entrepreneur. Uh, when I was 10, I baked cakes and uh, cookies with my sister that I used to sell to my neighbors and family and friends. Uh, I always thought of me, of me about having a restaurant. And 20 years ago, when I started cooking, uh, my big dream was to opening a small restaurant near my house in Cascais uh, that had 20 seats. It was from a French chef at that time. And I thought if life goes well to me, maybe I could be the chef and owner of that restaurant. Uh, I used to say now, that now I, we achieve like 100 times more than I could ever imagine. Uh, when we've opened Cantinho um, eight years ago, uh, we were like 20 people working. Now with the ones that we've opened from the scratch and with other, other smaller groups that we bought, uh, we have 34 restaurants, we manage 1,150 people, uh, one more restaurant in Dubai. So in eight years, it happens a lot of things. Uh, I have um, great business partners, I have an amazing team and that's the only reason that I can do what I do. Um, but it's hard work every day. Every day something happens uh, for better and worse. Uh, you, you arrive to the restaurant and you have a fridge that uh, stops working during the night and you have to throw um, a lot of uh, ingredients. Every day with so many restaurants something happens. Uh, we're serving dozens of thousands of meals a day. I think the secret here is to maintain uh, a great team working for the same purpose, uh, is, is, to, is to have people better than me around me, not to be afraid of hiring people that in some way that are better than me that I can also learn with them. And we grow together, that share my passion, that share sometimes my craziness also. You can think that you're prepared for opening a, a restaurant. You never prepare. You need to open and then you need to work hard to maintain it. Sometimes you feel like crying a lot, uh, but normally you don't have uh, strength to cry, so you don't cry, you just run. When, I, when we've opened uh, Bairro three years ago, uh, I lost 10 kilos, and with me it's not easy to, lost, to lose 10 kilos. I ended up with uh, IV in my veins uh, during one night. I, night, I put my family on vacation, it was August. We tried to do a, like a soft opening. Well, on the first Saturday we served 850 people. With uh, 60 people working here, uh, when we have now like 140, only in Bairro, uh, with the three concepts, the Berna, Patio and Beco, the Cabaret. So it's, it's tough, it's hard. It's company culture, it's more than me. This is everything that we've built up. Uh, now it's much more than José Viles, it's much more than me. It's the identity that I created, but it was also created by my team, and it's a culture of the company. And it's that culture that grows inside the company. We have now people, uh, more than 150, that are with us for more than three, four, five years. So they breathe 
uh, this uh, culture, company culture. It's really hard in this industry because we have like maybe 20-30% rotation every time uh, of uh, people working here. It's not a, a profession that, especially on the dining room, people serving on the dining room, it's not a profession that most of the people wanted to do for 20, 30, 40 of the rest of their lives. So it's like one year or six months, one year, two years. It's hard work, uh, the schedules are not so good, work on weekends, so uh, what we try to do is like to give these injections of culture when the people starting, they come as trainees and they start, they have all, always uh, training sessions to be able to get better and better in a short period of time. Of course, it's different to, to have one restaurant or to have uh, 20, but that's why we try to do our best in those. I have this uh, understanding that Lisbon can become, and it's becoming already, uh, a really gastronomic destination. You can't be a gastronomic destination if you only have local food, like Portuguese food, even if you have uh, traditional, contemporary, and uh, with different touches from different chefs, but you need to have more. I've brought like these ambassadors from different uh, cuisines, actually, uh, Alvo Sanish is uh, Argentinian, he's an expert in Asian food. Roberto, uh, Mexican, and Diego, a uh, uh, Peruvian. To bring to the city uh, great uh, Asian, uh, Mexican, and Peruvian food. To bring them as ambassadors uh, that, that promote the city and promote the gastronomic scene of, of Lisbon. In life, you can't do anything alone. I don't know how to cook uh, Peruvian, I don't know how to cook uh, Asian, I don't know how to cook Mexican. I know a few things, but I'm not an expert. So I decided uh, to have the partnerships with those chefs. I could not open a, a restaurant alone in Dubai uh, because I don't know the market. And it's actually quite fun to work with other people. Uh, you get uh, to learn more, you get to grow. So when I decided to make these partnerships, they are strategic because I, I really think that they could add a lot of value to what we do. That's why I always talk about my team too. I don't do anything alone, so uh, it's really good to be able to, to share uh, with them all the things that we do. There's a lot of intuition, but at a certain time when you have hundreds of people working with you and one decision, because when you're starting, if you lose something, you don't, you don't lose much. When you are on this stage, if you lose something, you lose a lot. Uh, you put on risk a lot of people that works with you, that trusted you, that believes in you. So intuition, it has to be there, but then you put on paper, you make your economics, uh, you study, uh, you try to understand the market, uh, you try to understand what will happen in the next couple of years. I'm not saying 10 years because I don't think anybody right now know what was, was going to happen in the next 10 years. The, the market is faster and faster everywhere, but we try to understand the next two, three years maximum and try to grow now uh, as um, a medium big company already. Only like 0.5% of the companies in Portugal have more than 500 people working. So we are already part of that. It's very few companies. So we need to take less risks than we used to. As a cook, as a chef, I used to say that uh, flavor, the taste is the most important thing. Uh, but of course, everything that surrounds you is very important in, exp in experience. Uh, so for me, uh, to be in a place with uh, good design, with great chairs, with uh, great uh, uh, lights, everything is very important. Since the business card to the website, the way you answer the phone, to the smile at the door, the way you've opened the door, the, the, the chairs, the tables, the, the, the plates, the. Um, this is the devil's on details and in this kind of business uh, more and more.
I think are the long hours, skipping uh, parties or get-togethers, but especially, of course, for me as a father is uh, sometimes not to be able to be there when I have to. Sometimes kids' birthday or kids' school parties or Christmas time. I'm traveling on the 25th this year. I'm shooting a TV show in Brazil, so there's something that I really didn't want to do, but I have to. Well, I really need to try to separate what is José Village, the person, or what is José Village, the professional and the brand. Personally, for me, nothing changes. And I try to put my ego on the box and I turn many times the key because the ego only destroys your life and your feelings and the business and uh, your team. Of course, the achievements and the um, prizes and all these awards or whatever are, are really important for business, are really important for the brand, are really important for Portugal, for the city, for my team. For me, it's not, are not so important, I have to admit, uh, as a person, I, because I don't feel that I've changed. I'm not better with them. The only thing that maybe I have more responsibility with them, so it's, it changed, but it's not for the best. It's only I, I'll have a harder time because ex expectations uh, grow. I, I used to say that maybe one of the happiest moments in my life was when uh, Portugal won the Euro Cup because it was only I had zero responsibility I only party, I was so happy for the Portuguese, for myself, I was with my wife, with my kids, with some friends. Uh, so everything was uh, amazing. When we receive a Michelin star, um, it's not like a golden medal in the in Olympics because a golden medal, medal you put on your room, on the wall, and the Michelin star, they can take you every year. Um, so responsibility on top of that. When we have one restaurant, one, one restaurant with two mission stars, but several other restaurants that people know that are from my team, from José Village, they think that they will have uh, two mission star pieces. So expectations are uh, uh, once again giving me more responsibility, and I wrong. It's, they're making a different uh, movie. So great, so we achieved a lot of awards. Uh, for the team is amazing, for Portugal is amazing. Uh, with no fake modest, uh, I, I have to say that I'm not alone. We were maybe the ones that started to introduce Portuguese cuisine into the world, of fine dining Portuguese uh, into the world. And that gives you once more, more uh, responsibility, but also put you in history. My dad died when I was seven, when he was 36 years old. So I always thought that I had to do everything very fast to be able to achieve something, maybe to try to run from dead or something like that. Now that I'm older than him, I want to achieve the 90, um, so 50 years ago. Uh, I think that we all should live uh, more uh, every day. Um, once I, I heard this already sentences, it's like uh, to live every day like if it was the first, but also uh, like if it was the last one. It's like to have fun, uh, but to be uh, at the same time uh, very attempt to be able to learn. So learn and have fun every day because if you live in the past or in the future you forget you forget to live